Your dreams aren't big enough. If they don't scare you, if they don't keep you up at night, if they don't motivate you when you don't feel like it, they don't get you out of bed, they're not big enough. Fact. Your dreams should be so so big, so astronomical, so large that it should just scare you into action. Fact. You should be wanting to chase after it every single day. That's fact. He was talking about how um, he was uh, maybe in a class or something like that or doing some type of recording. And whoever the professor or whatever it was said that you can give the same clip to a hundred different people and have them edit it. And none of them are going to look the same. Like nobody's clip is going to be the same. It's all going to be different. So it's just like your take on something is going to be different. So I'm, when I'm thinking about like, you know, doing the recordings and, and doing the editing and creating like documentary and how the layout is going to be formatted, it's like I know that my vision is going to be different. So anyone else's, yeah, yeah, and all that's all it's going to take is for somebody to be like, I like this perspective, and mm -hmm. that's it. Like, and it's off, off to the races, yeah. But you know what? Though, I had a question about this. So, you brought up, you know, wanting to do a documentary in regards to the school to prison pipeline and everything else. And I know we had talked briefly about it when I came to see y'all before I rolled out. Um, but it's been heavy in my mind, mm -hmm. um, even recently because I'm now back in the school system and I'm seeing a little bit more. I'm like, With the pandemic going the way it has gone, mm -hmm. with the spikes and the waves and how education has been forced to work from home remotely mm -hmm. um, due to, and I, and, I, and I would like to say due to the fact that we haven't been able to, as a country, be on the same accord and kind of do what's necessary to get us back into a, a, new, a, a somewhat normal lifestyle, mm -hmm. I really am concerned about <clears throat> what the, the school to prison pipeline is going to look like in the next few years. It's going to grow exponentially because if you look at it, like a lot of our kids are struggling. They're always even our teachers, our principals looking at the data, our in-person scholars, like VOI test scores or whatever, versus like those who are working virtually are drastically different. Mm -hmm. And whether it means like they're just not logging on, they need extra supports, they, you know, they're not getting what they need or what have you, or the learning style is different. Um, I'm really worried about like the reading, the literacy and, and everything else of our young people in elementary schools, um, you know, who need the foundational things to be able to right. be good like, readers and whatnot to kind of circumvent that whole school to prison pipeline. But we're still very much in a current, in a, in a, in a pandemic to where it's going to a second wave. Mm -hmm. Some schools are getting shut back down because of confirmed cases and quarantining and all that kind of stuff. We had to quarantine three kindergarten classes this week um, because a substitute teacher came and tested positive. You know what I'm saying? And so I still have to say what's happening with these kindergarten, first and second grade scholars that are working from, well, doing school from home or trying to at least um, and, and, and notice, and they have noticeable gaps in their learning and their progression as learners and readers. And how does that impact their third grade test scores and all that kind of stuff and the whole school to prison pipeline and how funding goes to prisons when they look at these different data points. I'm really concerned and worried about the future of that. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, that's, that's a strong point. I mean, to me it's valid because if you think about it, you know, especially, you know, with me being- Oh, wait, man, I'm, I'm, I'm forget this, I'm recording. <laughs> I don't care if it. I already hit record. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. I, I thought you noticed it. <laughs> I didn't even. Go ahead. No, I already, I definitely hit it before we even start, started this, this branch of the conversation. I thought, <laughs> I thought you did some purpose. Um, <laughs> but now, nah, man, like, um, especially with like, you know, being a math educator, right? What, what we talk about is uh, with, you know, story problems, word problems, whatever you want to call it. Pre-K, uh, kindergarten to second, right? It's um, learning to read. Third grade on is reading to learn. Yeah. Completely different, you know what I mean, subset of skills. But it's like if you don't have those basic foundations, um, you know, phonics, you know, knowing your sight words, all that, word, yeah. coding, all that stuff that, that happens when you first walk into a school building, or, you know, whatever the case is, it's like when you get to 
having to comprehend, it's like, oh, you you already behind behind eight ball. Like, and that's I that's what happens, I think, so many times that it's like the early skills, and this could be a fault of the of the school, could be, you know, whatever the case is. Like I've you know, I've seen in, in, in schools in, you know, early childhood more so like like the curriculum that's laid out or lack thereof, um, just creates these these gaps, these problems. Where it's like if the kids aren't explicitly taught, you know, these true to life skills that they are going to use to read anything later on in life, then how are they going to get to the point where you know, of like being fluent in reading it and also understanding what they just, you know, what they just went over. Like, you got to be able to get through it first to even start thinking about, all right, what did it, <laughs> what did it say? Like, yeah. read it. Like, if I don't know that your shirt says Paris, like, I can't, I can't ask any questions and say like, well, what is Paris? Like, what, why does he have it on his shirt? Right? It's like, if I'm struggling with just the lettering and understanding what it says, then I can't get to the greater meaning, which means that deeper understanding, knowledge, and wisdom is 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 against me, right? It's not it's not going to happen, um, you know. And that's that's the crazy part about it all. And you know, it's I wonder, man, with a lot of stuff because I always lean more to like the historical ramifications and uh, you know components of everything, but how do we how do we combat that? You know, with everybody being at home, you know, a lot of um, the pressure, of course, which you know it already was, but I think even more so is on parents. And you know, many of them got trauma, <laughs> um, you know, job situations, and you know, so of course, you know, the responsibility is there. Like you, you have to definitely do that, you know, and you know, take ownership. And be a part of, you know, especially if you got a, a young child, um, making sure that they get what they need. But it's hard, man. Like, you know, and I'm I'm not even speaking from the lens of being a, you know, like it's about to be eight months. Like, it's gonna be a little while before you start reading anything. Uh, but you know, for the people that have, you know, kids like four, five, six, seven years old, like, like how do you? How do you make that happen? Like, you know, if if your your own situation doesn't allow even for like time, like mm. you, gotta, you gotta be logged in, or even if you gotta travel into work still, right? Those what they call essential workers, or you know, whatever the case is, like people that work in the healthcare field, like you gotta go and take care of people, and you also gotta figure out what's gonna happen as far as your own child's earning, you know. Um, but it's I think it's definitely a testament to the idea that um, education and school are not synonymous. Mm. Like that's to me, that's just always kind of been where I've come to. And I was, I was good in school. Like I was, I was a wonderful student. I had a good time. Like and I, school wasn't really hard. It was, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just, I just wonder, you know, for those people, man, like they got those young kids at home and. If those kids are struggling, like, what does that mean? And even, you know, talk, we're talking, like, to Andrea, you know, if she's a she's bad teacher still. Like, Ooh, get still. Legally, legally binding documentation to mm -hmm. provide services to these students, man, to these kiddos. And they're, like, kids are still being qualified. For How, Sway? You know what I mean? So, and this is, like, this is a country, <laughs> countrywide. Like nationwide issue, I mean, it might be worldwide. I don't know. I can only speak to you know we live in the United States, but uh, like the there was already an issue with the overclassification and um, you know all those things, right? And we definitely talking about like with young black boys, like what do you do, you know? And you know, I was reading like one of my favorite series probably about this this whole topic is. Uh, Countering the conspiracy to uh, destroy black boys by Dr. Jawanza Kanjufi. Like his his take on it is crazy, and he got a whole video bro, on YouTube. If you ain't seen it, he breaks it all down. It's crazy, like man. Um, even through like the expectations of it, like employment, and making it to the NFL, like he breaks down those numbers. <laughs> like 
you know what I mean? All the way down to like, oh, you know, four people that you know or whatever it is. Like at every level, he breaks it down. Um, but yeah, man, it's just, they, there has to be other ways to go about it though. Like, I think the, I think a lot big problem of, you know, the system is that it's, it's completely like standardized. I think that, that right there within itself already creates a problem. The issue, yeah. It already creates a problem. Like, you know, if you, everybody's supposed to be reading at this level or, you know, and then look at even like what all that stuff is based on, like IQ tests. That stuff was created by, like, I feel like some racist German or, you know what I mean, somebody who was, had like a, you know, a superiority complex and it was created to denigrate others. Like, it's, it was designed for certain people to excel. Like, yeah. you got to look at how, you, how you're measuring stuff too. Like, you know, these tests and everything, like standardized testing, and especially the way that they're being delivered now, like, so you got to, not only are you taking standardized tests, which are going to be tiered to not a, not even a level, but just like a, a demographic or a, a certain layout or how do you want to say it, um, that is not going to necessarily fit the bill for the majority, but it's also now being presented and expected to be done and completed on computers. Yeah. So not only do I have to know the, the, the material and the content of the grade level, right, or you know, whatever the case is, no matter what what the um you know, how good I guess you could say my school is, um, you know, taking into account all kinds of behavioral issues and stuff that teachers gotta deal with on a regular basis and still deliver, you know what I mean, the the, the content, you know, for kids to learn and, and also all the, you know, issues that People got at home. So on top of all that, I also know have to know how to manipulate Navigate. this device. Mm -hmm. Drop down menus, drag and drop. Uh, I got to know how to type when I'm in second grade. Like I was like, "Yo, come on!" <laughs> like, this yeah, is, man. Like I, I learned. How to, I don't know about you, bro. I learned how to type when I was in sixth grade. Shit, I ain't learned. Well, they didn't teach us until high school. That was terrible. Yeah, I learned in sixth grade. We had a typing class. And we used to put those little orange skins over. And cover it up. Yep. Oh, no. You know what? That wasn't middle school. Yeah, that wasn't middle school. Man. I do remember that. Good look at it. And you had to sit there. And, but now it's like kids got to type whole paragraphs in, in third grade on the standardized test. Writing right prompts and stuff. Man. And, and, they, and, they, and they hit me with the, with the search and peck. Like, come on, man. Come on. And timed. Man. And it's, you, got, you, got, you have an hour. I'm like, bro, come. I couldn't do this in an hour. And I got a master's degree. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you said like, we used to talk about like the over diagnosis of like identifying kids with, you know, IEPs and all that and ADHD. Like you expect, you like, I had a parents talking about a pre-K student that they want to get evaluated for ADHD because they can't sit in front of the computer. I said, they are four. <laughs> they ain't never did school before, let alone did school virtually in the home where they have all their toys, TV, food, and everything else, and their mama there, like, and their daddy. Like, it just, that's different. Like, and, and so, like you said, like, how are you going to assess anyone and diagnose anyone and get anyone evaluated and approved for IEP under these circumstances, right? Like, it just... It does not make sense, man. That's why when you said they were still doing, I was like, "Yo, are you serious? Like, how are people are still getting qualified for IEP services for working in this situation? It just doesn't make sense." And then now, like, I sat in on a few art meetings, and they'll even say now, like, they have a, a, a after they go through the after they go through the meeting and they talk about what services need to stay, what services can go away, what have you, the progress of the student. At the end, when they when they land on what they're gonna do moving forward. They have this one document where the parent has to sign off saying that the school will do their best to ad to adhere to the IEP and the services rendered in this document. Not that they have to do them due to the circumstances of the pandemic. So they're like, you know, we're gonna, we identify they need extra time, accommodation, this and the third, but we're going to do our best to make sure it happens. We can't guarantee it. And this paper is saying you can't hold us liable if we can't make it happen. 
you know, to full fidelity because of the pandemic. So it's like yeah. you're you're evaluating people with a with a with a iron thumb or iron fist saying that this person has this, this, this and this, but then you're gonna say that on t- after you do that, that we can't even promise that we're able to carry out these services with fidelity because of the pandemic. So how can you evaluate in the same in the same light? It doesn't make sense, man. It just doesn't make sense. On, on the and well to that point too, like I know certain certain situations there they've created like a dish like addendums basically to mm-hmm. attach the IP for like distance learning purposes. So that is already a whole other thing, which is more work on top of you know like special education teachers because not only do they they already got all this paperwork and everything they have to deal with. Now it's like you give them some more, and then they also you know have to abide by whatever you know school base is saying, district is saying. It's it's crazy. But on on the topic of like um, evaluation, like for evaluation with teachers, I feel like <laughs> from what I've heard, man, like it, and I don't know how many districts this applies to. I can speak to one district, but it's definitely like they they don't they haven't adjust, they've adjusted like everything else except the approach um, with evaluation of teachers. Like they've changed certain things as far as like how much how heavily certain things weigh. But like it's they still like are planning to do like heavy teacher observations and give people scores. Like you, so you want so you gonna come into this Microsoft Teams uh, Zoom class and judge me whether on, on you know uh, engagement and things like that. Whenever this kid is at home and you know the supervision is is you know maybe lackluster or whatever, or like I mean number one they're just at home too. Like yeah, at home. home. Like I'm um, I'm I'm definitely like if I'm in class at the crib I'm I'm on the lane like. <laughs> I gotta, you know, push myself to sit up straight and be on camera. Like, you got that. Then you got, you know, it, possible issues with like devices and stuff. Then you got, um, you know, kids could just really just be like, my computer doesn't work. Or, <laughs> and to my knowledge, like, when, like this is when I was, um, you know, still in the, in the district last year. Like when district uh, distance learning had started was like kids were not required to actually turn in the work. And there was yeah, no yeah. I was like, hold up. So I mean, I just couldn't imagine like, you know, like I couldn't imagine from the administrative side or from the teacher side for sure. Like you going in there or because I, I know if I was administrator, I would just be like, hey look, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna see what you are but there's, I don't, unless the teacher either doesn't show up for the class or is just sitting on there doing nothing, I don't understand how people can look at a teacher and say that they are anything less than effective. Like, yeah. come on, man. As hard as it is, especially because a lot of these teachers got kids at home themselves who yeah. are logged into classes too. Like, so you, you try to teach a class, your child is over here in a class, and you, you got to be both. You got to be the parent, and you. Oh, long yeah, bro. Ah. It's it's a, it's the reality of it all, man. And and, and it's it's really insanity. But it's like then you think about like you know in school, pre COVID, pre pandemic. Oh, no. you, just, you had you had locus of control. You had a locus of control. You know what I'm saying? Where you know you can kind of talk to a kid, intervene, have that kind of stuff, pull them to the side doing lunch, whatever, whatever, and. These kids are also given given a break. We don't know their home situations. We don't know their home situations. So we're sitting here telling them to be, you know, in slant and have your camera on on and have your on mute. But we don't know what's going on in the background. I had a I had a student where um, parents are having an argument in the background, like yelling and fussing and cussing. And the teacher had to call me, let me know because that's my that's my little wheelhouse or whatever. But like, all these things are happening. Yeah. But you want to evaluate me if I'm effective? Yeah. Like, come on, Slim. Like, what do you mean? Like, it just doesn't. It just doesn't add up, man. And um, you know, I don't know what the future holds for. What it's gonna look like? But it's definitely crazy, man. It's 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 a whole new level. It's a whole new beast. Yeah, for sure. 
it's you know, real crazy. Just continue to push forward, continue to know that you have purpose, and continue to fulfill your dreams and your passions, and everything else will fall into place.